like to call on our president at this time for his thoughts as we draw this to a close. Over to you, David. Thank you. Well, I have negative time, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> since we were done a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that reduces the challenge of having to, uh, uh, to synthesize ideas out of, um, out of such a complex uh, conversation. But let me just uh, respond to the two issues that I think were, were uh, laid out uh, by Reg at the beginning as things that I would try and deal with. One is, why should business address economic inequality or, or should it not? I think it's clear from, uh, and this is synthesized from my understanding of what what I've heard from the panelists. I think it's clear that all the panelists were saying business should, um, both for what, for lack of uh, time to think of better qualifications, I would refer to as internal, an internal orientation and an external orientation. Internally, uh, uh, Hari gave us uh, that uh, intriguing view of a pyramid that looked like it could tip one way or the other and, and was trying to be shored up. I mean, there's the, in the limit, there's the, there's the concern, I guess, as to whether the, the system is stable or not in its current configuration, and a number of suggestions that it's not. Uh, but also, uh, I think from several of the speakers, uh, the, the notion of growing the capacity of the economy to make the business itself successful. I mean, Radica's uh, uh, characterization that uh, inequality depresses aggregate demand, uh, and so from, the, from an internal perspective, there's certainly reason to be engaged. From an external orientation, uh, uh, I think, again, many of the speakers were, were aligned, uh, and uh, I don't mean to, um, uh, uh, don't mean in this summary to set aside the, the nuances, but I think uh, many people saying business should not be only about, uh, about profit, uh, but, but certainly uh, other things to, uh, to keep in mind. We hear a lot about corporate social responsibility uh, with respect to uh, businesses in Canada, or have heard in the last few years. Uh, there were some examples of things that the panelists mentioned. Uh, Hari talked about providing products, uh, doing product design based on, on uh, more than just uh, the ability to sell, but what might be particularly useful in, uh, uh, in the economy. Uh, many people talked about managing the salary ratio between high and low, low salaries. Uh, Brent talked about paying attention not just to the broader community but to the local community uh, for these things, and uh, and Rick was talking about uh, uh, you know world peace through world trade and the and the, the entailments of globalization, some of which are good and some of which are not so good. Um, Radica's comment about uh, businesses being able to see themselves as uh, as organizers uh, rather than just as profit makers, I think, is in that same uh, that same category. The second question that I was asked to address, I think, is uh, to rebut to some extent uh, the uh, observation of Harry's acquaintance that uh, university professors don't do anything useful, but they make money, uh, and suggest that university professors actually can do something useful uh, uh, in this uh, in this regard. Uh, <clears throat> and I think one is, is the generalization from this uh, last hour and a half that we've spent together, uh, and that is to really engage in thinking about uh, what the economy is and who it's for, uh, as, uh, uh, as Reg had uh, framed the question earlier, uh, and pressing deeply to understand. I mean, one of the things that's interesting for, uh, is being... Uh, uh, being in the position of president of a university, a person gets to, to bump into, not to get uh, engaged in detailed conversations with everyone, but bump into many different people and see different perspectives and get a sense of, uh, you know, cultures within disciplines and cultures within departments and cultures within faculties. And there are, there's, there's a complexity surrounding a lot of these issues that we're talking about today. So I think one of the things that we that uh, the academy can do, that faculty members can do, is pursue this, this uh, uh, goal of uh, discovery and research and understanding, and to pr pursue it deeply, right? and listen to each other and communicate fully, and this kind of thing is, uh, is a very useful example of a step in that direction. The world is complex beyond what we often admit in our quick summaries of the positions that we take with each other, and, uh, and uh, I have I think the thing that gives us hope as academics is that as we engage at, at uh, substantial levels of detail and seek substantial understanding, we can, we can actually find common ground. Second thing I think that, that um, uh, faculty can do, the university can do, is engage uh, in this kind of conversation in the larger community so that, that people who have studied deeply and thought carefully about these things uh, really have uh, a responsibility, I think, in, 
in a context where, where we are funded by public money, we have, we have the opportunity and uh, the responsibility to participate in shaping policy uh, by informed, uh, informed conversation, not within, not just uh, intramurally, but extramurally uh, outside the academy, shaping policy and advising business uh, on these things. And then finally, uh, I, I think one of the most substantial things that can happen um, in the university, what can, what can uh, faculty members do, is, is teach students to see the world from a position of, of course, from the, the knowledge of their own domains, uh, whatever they're, they're studying, whether it's um, uh, computer science or anthropology. Uh, uh, I'm a computer scientist, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with anthropology, too. Um, uh, I'm even okay with business. Uh, uh, so to see, to see the world from a perspective of, of uh, the, spec the specific knowledge, specialized knowledge of, of one's own domain, but also to see the world from a, a position of personal social responsibility and collective social responsibility. And I think one of the, one of the things that, that this kind of conversation can remind us is that that's an important collection of things that we need to help our students understand, not just the specific sort of details of the domain knowledge, but what, what does it mean to leave with that kind of knowledge and participate in a society that has inequities that, that I think all of us, everyone here at the front and probably everyone in the room agrees, are simply not acceptable moving forward. Thank you very much. And thank you to our panelists this afternoon and thanks to each of each one of you for taking time out of your Friday afternoon. And I do want to take one special moment to thank Scott McCullough, who was absolutely instrumental in pulling together these two panels these last two days. Thank you for coming, and if you join me now in thanking the panel and Scott. <laughs>